Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and this is the first video in a new series which I'm going to call Daily A Level Maths Tricky Question. And what I will do is post every day, hopefully, a tricky maths question from A Level Maths. Now, I will make it so that it is accessible to um, all four of the major boards so, Edexcel, AQA, OCR, and OCR MEI. So it will be a topic which is in all four of those specifications, so it doesn't matter what board you're on. I'm hoping this is going to be very helpful for you. And what I suggest that you do is that you pause the video at the start and try the question yourself, and then um, watch for the solution. Because not only shall, will I be giving you the solution, I'm also going to give you some top tips along the way and to give you an insight into how I would solve these questions in sort of exam conditions. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into the question. Figure 6 shows a sketch of a curve with parametric equations x equals 4 cos t plus pi over 6 and y is equal to 2 sine t. It says show that the Cartesian equation of c can be written in the form x plus y all squared plus a y squared is equal to b, where a and b are integers to be found. And it's a 5 mark question, it's a question 14 and here is how I would solve it. So the first thing I would notice is that this is not very friendly. It's not very friendly to have a, um, an input of t plus pi over 6. So I'm going to use my uh, compound angle formula to expand that. The compound angle formula states that cos a plus b is equal to cos a cos b minus sine a sine b and that's given in your formula booklet and we need to apply it in this instance here so I have that x is equal to 4 lots of and then a is t and b is pi over 6 so I'd write cos t cos pi over 6 minus sine t sine pi over 6 now these are exact values. Pi over 6 is 30, and we know what the value of cos 30 and sine 30 are. So I'd write x is equal to 4 lots of, uh, cos of 30 is root 3 over 2, so this now becomes root 3 over 2 cos t, and sine of uh, 30 or pi over 6 is a half, so this becomes a half sine t. Okay, I can rewrite that as uh, multiplying through by 4. I'm going to get 2 root 3 cos t. And I'm going to get 4 times a half is, uh, is 2. So 2 sine 2t. Two okay, so now, ideally I wanted it just in terms of sine because we've got a y is equal to sine 2t. But, I mean, that is handy in the fact that we can substitute that straight into our equation for x. So I can now write that x is equal to 2 root 3 cos t minus a y, because 2 sine t is equal to a y. And I could bring the x's and y's to one side, and I'm left with this. Okay, now here's the tricky step. I've got one equation which has a cos t in it, and I've also got another equation which has a sine t in it. Now whenever I'm trying to convert a two parametric equations into a Cartesian, and I see that one of them is a cos t and one of them is a sine t, then what I would do is I would make cos t the subject of one equation. So this would give me x plus y over 2 root 3. And I would make sine t the subject of the other equation which will give me sine t is equal to y over 2. And then I can use our trusty old formula, cos squared plus sine squared is equivalent to 1. So I can square both sides, which will give me x plus y squared over uh, 2 squared is 4 and root 3 squared is 3, so 4 times 3 is 12. And here I can have sine t squared is equal to y squared, and square the bottom gives me 4. 
Now we know, like I said before, that cos squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. So that means I can say that x plus y squared over 12 plus y squared over 4 is equal to 1. I can then multiply both sides through by 12 and this will give me x plus y squared plus uh, take out a factor of 4 will leave me 3. So 3 y squared is equal to 12. And we have our Cartesian equation in the correct form where a is equal to 3 and b is equal to 12. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found that useful. If you did, please do like the video. That would be greatly appreciated. And if you're not subscribed already, uh, please do so. Like I said, I'm hoping to make this into a daily series. And finally, let me know in the comments how you got on with that question and what question you would like to see next. Would you like to see an easier one or a trickier one? Or is there any particular topics you'd like me to cover? Okay, and um, bye for now.